Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures review of this 2022 Infinity QX60 aka the luxurious Nissan Pathfinder. I didn't like this color when I saw it in pictures but in person I actually do like it quite a bit. It's something titanium. I'll be sure to put that up on the screen or talk about it in a minute from the Monroni but anyway I do like this color a lot and Overall, I've really enjoyed driving it. So it, it does have a V6 with uh, higher horsepower than torque. So, you know, power comes on a little bit higher RPM, but with the nine speed automatic transmission, it does really well. And sorry, it's so dirty, but it's been one of those weeks where it's been snowing and rain and road salt, and we aren't able to make it to the regular test hill, but we're out here in a fun little spot with some sand that is extremely hard and nice view of the lake and mountains. So anyway, uh, let's take a look under the hood. Okay, here under the hood, it doesn't open very wide. So the hood doesn't open real big to get you a lot of room in there. But anyway, this is the 3.5 liter V6 with 295 horsepower and 270 foot pounds of torque. And it has a nine speed automatic, as I mentioned, really a good setup. I like the nine speed a lot and it is front wheel drive bias, but this one's all wheel drive, of course, and has a towing capacity of about 6,000 pounds with built-in trailer sway control and all that kind of stuff. And it actually has a transmission cooler to help when you are towing and hauling heavy loads. And there's your seven pin plug, of course, and the hitch. Uh, heavy for this, at least, when you're towing you know, up to 6,000 pounds. It does have a transmission cooler to help with that. Let's go ahead and take a look inside before we do that all four doors you can lock by touching here and you unlock just by grabbing the handle which is really nice convenient easy you don't have to walk to the front door to unlock it like that first or hit the key fob you just grab any of the handles and it will unlock lots of storage here uh, kind of a cup holder additional storage and it does have a separate little cutout here for your obd2 with a light right there which is interesting the seat massage, which I didn't know about for the first few days, I did find that button. It, it works pretty well. I mean, it does give you a little massage. It's more, almost more to keep you awake than anything else. And the inside, as you can tell, is really nice. Let me flip the fan off. There we go. And it does have a head-up display. I doubt you'll be able to see that zero on camera. I'm not moving, but let's see if I can get an angle. Yeah. Can't really see it. All right. Anyway, um, it does have self-driving features here. And, you know, whatever, not self-driving features, sorry. Lane keep assist and steering assist and all that kind of stuff. Adaptive cruise control. Has all those safety features, which I don't use a lot. I'm not going to talk about them beyond this because I don't use them. I find, especially this past week where it's been snowing a lot it's just the the systems aren't good enough yet to manage the bad weather and all that kind of stuff so this screen here well first of all i like this screen it is a it is a touch screen the infotainment screen up here and um yeah easy clear simple down here this screen is a little bit different for me and they are missing one dial it should have a tune knob there i uh it's kind of a pain to, if you're going to scroll through a ton of audio stations, whatever, Sirius XM, you're going through a ton of stations at once. It's a little bit of a pain, but it should... Uh, wrong one, there we go. When you bring up this, you can scroll through them on here. I don't know if that's even showing up on the camera very well, but anyway, um, it does have a way for you to do the direct tune and all that kind of stuff, but uh, for the most part, that is one thing I would love to see is a tune knob and then these buttons I can see them really well now but when the headlights were on and it was kind of dark kind of light outside you know the sun was just coming up uh, it was hard to see these they weren't backlit bright enough but you can always just hit the button there and it will change the brightness of both screens it does have heated seats cooled seats heated steering wheel and the same for the passenger and this whole thing so whenever you touch a button on here it kind of like shakes the whole thing to give you the feedback that yes we're registering that you push the button 
I don't know if I like that or not, but it is a very sleek design and you can see the reflection in it, of course, which if you have that much reflection, any dust, any uh, scratches, whatever will show up really easy, but when it's brand new, it looks gorgeous. And this whole car is kind of that way. It, it just looks really nice. It does have the panoramic sunroof. I only have the front portion open right now and the camera rear view mirror. Here's a transmission shift lever. It's a little bit hard to get into neutral, but you just do a half push and it goes to neutral. If you're doing manual mode, pull it down twice and it will go to manual mode. And you do have paddle shifters up here for the manual mode. Park, you just push the button there. Drive mode selectors here. I did talk about this, but we have personal, sport, auto, eco, and snow. And I'm not going to take this one off-road very much where we have to drive back across that ice and I broke through on my way over. So anyway, there'll be a little bit, a little bit driving around in the sand out there, but it's so hard right now that it's not even gonna be like anything crazy. Has the auto hold, so when you pull up to a stoplight, you push on the brake, it just holds it for you. You don't have to keep your foot on the brake and the electronic parking brake there. And then of course, one thing I love that I pretty much all the Nissan and Infiniti vehicles have is the camera button right there. You don't have to go searching through the screen to find the camera. Sorry, they're, I mean, you can see they're all a little bit dirty right now. I have cleaned them off a couple of times, but it's a very clear camera system. I like this a lot. When you're parking, you can bring up the front wheel there. But yeah, overall, it's just a really clear camera system. I like it and having the button makes it super easy. It's, you know, you pull into a parking stall, how close am I to the curb? How close am I to the other vehicle? Whatever it may be, am I inside my lines? You don't wanna go looking through this screen, menu, I don't know, apps or whatever it is on other vehicles. You just come down here and hit camera button and you have it. So that's very nice to have. And it also has, you know, the other quick ones, you have home and audio and all that kind of stuff there too. So easy to get to all that stuff. And this helps you navigate all that as well, or you can use a touch screen, so easy enough. Small center storage here, and this has a couple of charge, one USB, a 12 volt outlet, has wireless charging. Let me see if I can get the camera down in there, in here, wireless charging, and then a couple USBs there. So when the wireless charging's on, this is just a light that shows that it's charging, and then the, the other USBs. So not too bad. It's really simple, easy to use. I like, so even though this is kind of like a touch screen, I like it because it has all the buttons there. I wanted the heated steering wheel on. I just hit the button. I don't have to go looking through screens to find all of it. It's almost a physical button. It's a touch screen and you do have to actually push down enough on the screen. If you just touch it, it doesn't work, but there is like an actual, you have to push down on it. So uh, let's take a look in the middle row. I wanted to show you guys something out here too. So this is the ice and it's pretty thin. You can hear it kind of cracking, but that right there is still ice. And you can see that's actually right in my shadow. But anyway, that's still ice out here. And I don't think it'll support my weight anymore. I did walk out on it a little bit earlier but that ice is like the clearest ice I've ever seen in the wild. Pretty cool. Uh, anyway, back to the middle row. So here, again, really nice seats. And they have, you can push this button here to fold them to access the third row really easily. And it, the third row is just a two seat row. So it is a six seater overall. And I'm gonna try it's a little bit muddy. I want to try and keep this as clean as I can. Uh, a little bit sandy and muddy out there, but anyway, you do have heated seats here in the rear and two USBs and a 120 volt outlet. Only 150 watts, but should charge all of your basic devices. And then you can control the climate back here. I have it off up front, so it's not letting me turn it on right now. And it does have the vents up here. I do like having the vents here and not just here. So a lot of times the vehicles will just have them here. Having them up here, especially if you have kids in car seats, will let you have the air come down from the top and blow onto the kid in the car seat rather than just hitting the back of the car seat if it's rear facing. And this does say autograph on it. But again, these seats are all 
nice quilted plaid leather, whatever, I don't know. Not plaid, I, I don't know. anyway. Uh, but it's really comfortable here in the second row as well. Plenty of leg room. And I think that driver's seat's actually back a little bit from where I normally sit. Um, but yeah, plenty of comfort. The headrest, you can see, I've talked about this before, but the headrests do lean forward a little bit. Some people will find that uncomfortable. It's been okay in this vehicle for me, but I know I've had problems with other vehicles. And obviously, sunshade there, which is always nice if you've got kids. And the seats do also fold and they tumble. Um, do I have to hit the button for it to tumble? Maybe they don't tumble. Actually, I know they do tumble. Anyway, uh, they do fold like that. Oh, it's two hands to get it back up. And if you just do that button, so there's the tumble feature. Then maybe they don't tumble all the way up like I thought. Okay, back here in the third row. Try and keep this as clean as we can, but I just barely fit. You can move the second row forward a little bit to get a little bit more room, but I just barely fit here. There are vents for the third row passengers there, and I'm not sure if that one's an actual vent or what that one is, but um, USB charging port as well, one on each side. And it's pretty tight back here, but you can fit six adults, especially if they're average height, under six feet, you can fit three six foot tall people in here if you just move the seats forward a little bit, and it'll be just fine. And they make it really convenient to get out. You don't have to go looking for a handle. It does have a handle down here as well, a manual release, but uh, the electronic one right there makes it super easy to get in and out. Let's take a look in the cargo area. That's not working. There we go. So there's a button right there. With it being so dirty, uh, it was hard to see. But anyway, I was hoping I had the uh, automatic thing with the waving your foot under it. These seats do fold. So you can fold all of them down. You can pull the headrest to fold it as well to get a flat load floor. And there are anchors, which you probably saw when I was in the third row, but anchors there. The 12 volt outlet. And they are power folding as well. Maybe they're not power folding, but they will power lift. Interesting. So they have power lift, but not they don't collapse with power. You have to pull the handles to have them collapse. Interesting design. And they do recline as well. You can adjust, you know, wherever you want them. Under here, big storage area, and your jack is actually uh, back in there. It's a little slick. Let's see if I can open that. But anyway. Uh, your jack's back there and you have a uh, spot there to get to the winch to get to the spare tire which is right there so uh, when I say winch that's the winch that raises and lowers the spare tire and I'm not sure why I can't get into that right now but anyway the jack is should be behind there all right that should be about all for the interior on this thing Let's get into this. Okay, here is the window sticker on this one. And this is the warm titanium exterior color with black. And that's the black roof, of course. From here up, it's basically black. And I didn't really talk about the interior color, but it's graphite. Um, it's kind of a dark black. It's a dark graphite. Um, lots of features come standard with this one. Uh, this is the QX60 Autograph. I believe it's like a Premiere version. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Autograph. All-wheel drive. Okay. And it is extremely well equipped. So the only options on this are $695 worth of options. So basically everything else is just standard on it. And a couple things I did notice. The headlights, adaptive front lighting system with auto leveling. When... I'm driving on the road and there are lots of street lights and lots of other cars. The headlights will point down really low. And then as soon as I get to an area that's dark, they kind of lift up. And there's still the brights on top of that that really light up the area. And I'll see if I can get some footage of uh, that. I don't know if I'll be able to, but uh, anyway, I was really uh, interested in those headlights. They are active headlights and they seem to work really well. They're very bright. 
And at first I was like, oh, they don't shoot very far down the road. That's not very good. But then I noticed as I got into areas where it was actually dark that it did actually lift them up a little bit. So very cool. I don't know what uh, I don't know what the option is on this one because it's not a normal uh, price sheet. But the total MSRP is 63945 with a destination of 1025 So it might be pretty much $65,000. Um, but very well equipped very nice vehicle and as far as competitors go in this range uh what are we looking at like an acura mdx or i don't know there's just not a lot that the uh lexus rxl and maybe the jeep grand cherokee l it's pretty luxurious but anyway there aren't a lot of vehicles in this class uh, it is just a really nice pathfinder and I enjoy it a lot. It's got a lot of additional features. I didn't talk about this, but these mirrors are automatic dimming. So when you're driving at night and people's headlights are here, the mirror, the side mirrors also dim. Uh, just a lot of little convenience fe features that make it that much nicer to drive. Definitely stuff you don't have to have, but stuff that makes a difference. Driving this Infiniti QX60 on the freeway, on the city streets, whatever, it's pretty pleasant. So there is a little bit of road noise, uh, a little bit more road noise, I should say, than many other luxury brands or entry luxury brands. I'm not sure where the Infiniti sits because clearly it's not Mercedes BMW level, but it's definitely above your regular ones. So. Anyway, it's there's a little bit of road noise, especially from the back of the vehicle, and not overwhelming by any means, but it cruises just fine. It's actually, I have to really pay close attention, and luckily there's a head-up display, or just use the cruise control, because if not, I end up finding myself going much faster than I wanted, uh, just because it cruises along real nice and easy. The nine-speed transmission does a really good job. There's only one spot where I've struggled with it or where it's struggled a little bit, and it's not very often. Uh, for example, when you're almost to a stop, you're slowing down fairly rapidly, like you were coming to a stoplight, and then the stoplight changes, and you go back to get on the gas. There's a little bit of delay there, but that really is the only spot where I've found uh, to have any delay or anything with this transmission that it's out of normal and it's not a big deal really at all it's like i said you're slowing down to stop anyway and then it just switches to green and so you got to get back on the gas that little section has a delay uh it has been snowing and stuff here and the snow mode is quite aggressive on this thing so when i put it in snow mode and i was accelerating it was snowing a ton on the freeway whatever so i had it in snow mode just playing around with it seeing what the all-wheel drive would do and all that and then I uh, got to a stoplight and tried to accelerate away from a stoplight and it was just cutting power so much. Well, reducing throttle input. So I was like half throttle before it kind of started to move a little bit. So it, it does a really good job of reducing the throttle input so you're not gonna be spinning the tires or anything when you're in snow. And really, that's what you want. And for me, it was, just a little bit too numb so it should have had a little bit more aggressive throttle but i'd get used to it like i said that's really what you want when you are in snow another nice thing about this car that i didn't even know i had for the first couple days is massaging seats so i don't know if you can see this right here but i have the massaging seats on refresh the intensity is all the way up and it's not super strong but it's nice to have i guess i don't know it's pretty cool all right here we are at the s turns and looks like we're free to go here and i should put this in sport there we go it changes the way the elbow drive system works but coming in a little bit hot yeah as i was sliding a little bit steering was very neutral getting on the throttle on the way out just fine it's it's uh not super aggressive doesn't you know it's not out handling a sports car or anything like that it's not on the par of a mercedes amg but it's fairly flat fairly stable in the corners it was 
you know, overall decent. It's capable of doing what you need it to do. If you're driving more aggressive than that, then you're probably in the wrong place and in the wrong vehicle. All right, let's do a zero to 60. We're just in more sport mode here. We're gonna flat foot it. Three, two, one, go. Oh, spun the tires a little bit. Zero to 60 was 7.51 seconds. Let's do one more. Three, two, one, go. for it to finish the quarter mile before we see the results and I'll be sure to screenshot that so we can load it in but 0 to 60 was 7.7 .7. so slightly faster on that one not too bad it actually jumps off the line pretty good and it's nice having this uh, OBD2 reader that can give me all the readouts right away so I don't have to go home and figure it out from the video, but uh, really not too bad. And eighth mile was 10 seconds, and that's about, I was maybe still full throttle. I probably came off the throttle a little bit before the eighth mile, so. This dirt road is probably more what most people will experience when off-roading in the QX60. My normal test hill, of course, is covered in snow right now and ice and just wouldn't be, you can see it's kind of sliding here even, uh, wouldn't be a good test for this vehicle right now. I just don't think it would be able to do much at all on that test hill. So anyway, this type of dirt road is very well maintained and that's pretty fun in the snow. The nice thing on these vehicles is when you turn off stability control and you can do it uh, at any speed, vehicle dynamic stability control off. So now I can play around a little bit and this road is pretty narrow so I don't want to get too out of hand. But anyway, on these Nissan Infiniti vehicles where you turn off the vehicle stability control within the driver information center here, it usually completely shuts it off and permanently so you're not having any issues with it coming back on once you go above a certain speed or any of that type of stuff it stays off when you turn it off it stays off so that's pretty cool anyway back to what I was saying these kind of roads I mean these bumps are roughly the same size that you would have on a normal paved road they're just much more frequent and of course this car handles all that stuff really well it's smooth it's pretty quiet i was actually surprised at how quiet it is you can hear the rocks and dirt getting kicked up a little bit but it's nothing crazy i guess let's have the camera on for this portion we'll avoid all the mud that we can and it's pretty sloppy out here so they call this place sandy beach but it also gets pretty muddy and these tires are not mud tires let's see if we can do a little bit here I guess if I get stuck we'll be making a phone call but I think I'll be okay luckily it's cold there we go and the mud's pretty hard so we're okay here we can get out and get some video and photo out here They did block off the other access, maybe, yeah. So there's another spot there that we can maybe get out on if we need to. But let's go ahead and get some fun shots here.
So I'm driving along here on the ice, and when I pull this, I can actually hear, gives me a warning release parking brake, but I can hear the front brakes grabbing. The ABS is actually working all four wheels, not just the rear wheels when you grab that. So kind of interesting, but yeah, anyway, the this thing's front wheel drive biased and I don't have a parking brake. It's hard to get it to drift or whatever, which is fine. And don't need to be doing that kind of stuff, I guess, but it is still so incredibly good on this snow. Like you can really get into it get it sliding a little bit but overall if I had stability control on and all that stuff it's hard to get this thing offline I currently have the stability control off and traction control off but when it's on it's pretty hard to get this thing to lose control and even with it off it's just so good that all-wheel drive system is really good and does such a great job that it is hard to get this thing to kick out this screen displays where the power is going so you can see I'm on this ice and it's near 50-50 split when I'm on throttle and it kind of adjusts and as I go full throttle, 50-50 split front rear. It does a really good job of transferring power where it needs to be. If you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos, hit the thumbs up and comment down below. If you didn't like it and you give me a thumbs down, do all those things as well. But comment and let me know what you didn't like and let me know what you want to see. What vehicles, what tests, what different uh, sections you would like to see on it. Maybe night driving and stuff like that. But uh, I'll see what I can do to uh, answer your questions and film what you want to see. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.